So I think the first thing to say is that eczema or atopic eczema is a, is a complex condition. The vast majority of the time, atopic eczema in particular is genetically programmed, particularly when um, the patient has a personal or family history of eczema, asthma, hay fever, or severe food allergies. So these, uh, all these conditions are linked to an allergic tendency in the body's immune system. So your genetic tendency for eczema, think of it as kind of setting the bar for how prone you are to developing eczema. But then on top of this, there are factors that patients report that often trigger or worsen their eczema. And these factors can include things like bacterial infections or any kind of infections such as viral, bacterial um, or fungal infections, allergens that they come into contact with, irritants like soaps and detergents. And often patients report to me that stress can trigger their eczema as well. So it's kind of that having that baseline genetic tendency, but often there are environmental factors that play into uh, the eczema. So it's a, it's a particularly complex condition. So the most common symptom that patients report is itch, but symptoms can also include things like pain, stinging, burning, weeping, and even crawling. The other thing to say is that the cosmetic impact of eczema can be quite debilitating, particularly, for example, when it's on the face or the hands, and this can affect people's self-confidence. Eczema can ultimately affect any part of the body, but the most common areas are the creases, usually with the elbows and knee creases, but also the wrists and the neck. And the other thing to say, I guess, is that the site of the body that is affected by eczema can change throughout life which can be really baffling as patients often wonder what could have caused their eczema to change, but often it's just the underlying condition um, changing the way it presents on the skin. So I think that leading a healthy balanced lifestyle is an important step in managing any skin disease. This includes kind of eating a healthy balanced diet, sleep, exercise, and managing stress. But that said, having active eczema can itself stop some of these healthy habits from being pursued. So for example, it can stop you from sleeping or exercising, and it's important to see a doctor to help break this vicious cycle. I would also say that food allergy can be a cause or aggravating factor in eczema, but I most often see this in very young children and rarely ever in adults. I would say that avoiding certain foods is rarely ever the answer to controlling eczema, and I see often patients who have gone on quite restrictive diets uh, to try and manage their eczema with little positive results. And I would say that um, dietary modifications are not a substitute for the medical treatment of this condition. I think if your eczema is impacting on your day-to-day -day life, it's important to see a doctor. This might include things like your sleep, your concentration, your work, your hobbies, your relationships, and even your mood. And all of these reasons are important reasons to seek help. I would also say that as dermatologists, we understand the far reaching impact that eczema has on every aspect of people's lives. So please don't suffer in silence with your condition and go and see a doctor to help control it. So when considering the treatment of eczema, I think it's useful to think of your skin as almost like a brick wall. In eczema, you lack an important ingredient in the cement that holds your skin cells together, and this ultimately makes the skin leaky. So water can ultimately leak out, making your skin dry, and allergens and irritants and even infections can leak in, causing inflammation, redness, and itching in the skin. So firstly, all patients need a moisturizer, which is applied regularly to replace the hydrating factors missing in the cement of your skin and most also need an anti-inflammatory cream or ointment. And the most common ones that we use are steroid creams or steroid ointments. However, steroids are not the only option as there are other classes of anti-inflammatory creams and ointments that we use called calcineurin inhibitors. We also sometimes use antibiotics and antiseptic washes for patients who are prone to secondary infection of their eczema. I find that antihistamines can help some patients, but they don't treat the inflammation in eczema and ultimately don't actually treat the underlying condition and can also cause drowsiness. So I don't tend to recommend them primarily for the treatment of eczema. And then beyond kind of topical treatments to the skin, we can use phototherapy, which is ultraviolet light delivered to the skin and even tablet or injectable therapies for more severe cases of eczema. 
I would say also that many patients can benefit from psychological support for their condition, as we fully appreciate the impact that eczema has on uh, people's mental well-being.